Hello everyone, my name is Olu Martins, and today I want to speak to you about being plucked from the fire. Do you realize as a Christian that you have been plucked from the fire? Yes, the fire of death and hell. You see, without the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, all of us would have ended up in hell. What Jesus did for us was he covered us with his blood. The Bible says we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. See, what this means is that when God looks at us, he sees the holiness of Jesus. He doesn't see the sinfulness of man or the depravity any longer. So anyone that believes in Christ has this blessing. We as Christians have all been plucked from the fire. See, there are dangers to not realizing daily or not remembering that we have been plucked from the fire. What are the dangers you might say to yourself? Well, there's the danger of apathy, the danger of indifference, the danger of lack of fervency for God and his word, the danger of no vibrancy in your Christian life, the danger of backsliding, and ultimately, the danger of losing your faith. See, what happens with a natural human being is this. It's kind of like riding a bike up a mountain. In order to, to, to uh, stay on that mountain, you have to keep pedaling. If you stop pedaling, you will go back. You will backslide. And so, this is the same danger that we face when we do not remember what God has done for us through the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. One of the people in the Bible that knew what Christ did for him was the Apostle Paul. To give a short biography on his life, he was a Jew and a fervent one for that matter. He had zeal and passion for God and his word. The only problem was that he was going in the wrong direction. His passion led him to kill and to persecute Christians. One day, on, his road, on, the, on the road to Damascus, he met with Jesus Christ. He was on his horse. He fell off his horse, blinded. And he heard the voice of Jesus saying, Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? At that moment, he knew who was speaking to him. After that encounter, after that dramatic encounter, his life changed completely. He became a brand new man. See, his encounter, his encounter with Christ would be like Hitler all of a sudden changing to Judaism and loving Jews. Yes, that encounter with Christ was that dramatic. The Apostle Paul realized who saved him. He knew that he had been plucked from the fire. How do we know this? We know from his own personal testimony. He said in his own words, I have been crucified with Christ. So he knew it. He knew it. He said, to live is Christ and to die he is gain. He also said, he considers everything that happened in his past life dung for the surpassing 
knowledge of knowing Christ. This man really knew that he had been plucked from the fire. Let me ask you, do you share the same passion and revelation as the Apostle Paul? Or do you take your salvation for granted, perhaps even thinking that the reason that you are saved is because of your good works? See, it is very important for us to remember who saved us and what we have been saved from. And so the question is, how do we remember? How do we remember? How do we keep this truth in our remembrance? See, the value of coming to the knowledge of the truth that God saved us and we have been plucked from the fire, the value of it is immeasurable. Let's talk about a few of them. One of the things that should happen when we know that we have been plucked from the fire is huge gratitude to God for what he has done for us. See, the Bible says that we have been redeemed, redeemed from certain death and hell. And so one of the things that we ought to do is we ought to be hugely grateful for what God has done for us. Perhaps a natural example might help you. Let's say that you needed a kidney because you were sick and perhaps you were number 500 on the list of the kidney uh, of, 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 of those that were waiting, you were number 500. And your doctor said to you that things are looking really bad because if you do not get a kidney transplant, you will certainly die. You were fearful, thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, maybe this is the end of my life. Out of the blue, a stranger appeared, having heard of your plight, and everything worked out, and he said that you could have one of his kidneys to save your life. How would you feel about that stranger? How would you feel? Obviously, you will be ecstatic, full of joy, that Wow, I have a new list on life. See, what Jesus did for you and I is even beyond what that stranger did for you in donating his kidney. Why do I say that? See, here's the thing. Even if you had a new kidney and you lived for another 50 years, the day will come when you certainly will die. What now? Even Lazarus, whom Jesus raised from the dead, eventually died at some, at some point. And so, what Jesus did for us is beyond just a person perhaps donating a kidney to another. Our gratitude should swell up at the, at the knowledge of that truth. Jesus not only saved us from death, eternal death, he saved us from hell and the lake of fire. This is very important. This is very important. And it should make us immensely grateful to God. This is one of the ways that we can keep that keep in our remembrance of being plucked from the fire. Another thing to consider is this. Again, let's use that fictitious man, that stranger that donated the kidney. What would you, what, how would you, how would you, how would you, what would you do? Would you want to know that person? 
Once you want to know a little bit about his life, his family, what kind of person he is, well, it's exactly the same thing. Jesus saved us from eternal death and hell. That's even more important than giving us a new kidney. We ought to be zealous for him. We ought to want to know him better and better. See, the Bible says in John 17, 3, eternal life is knowing God and his son, Jesus Christ. At the realization, at the knowledge of the truth that we have been plucked from the fire, we ought to want to know the Lord, the Christ that saved us from eternal death and hell. It should drive us to want to know him better daily, every single day of our lives. This is another way of keeping that knowledge and that remembrance. Also, what would you do? What would you give the man that saved you and donated a kidney? Won't you want to give him a gift, perhaps? Won't you want to do something for him as well? Maybe give him a gift of money. Maybe buy his children something. Obviously, that's what you would want to do. Again, realizing that it is Christ that saved us from certain death and hell, it should drive us to want to give him our all. What type of offering is sufficient? Well, the only offering that is sufficient is yourself. You are the offering. Your life is the offering. It should drive us to commit all of our entire lives to Him. It should drive us to commit our whole hearts to Him. It should drive us to commit our time, our energy, our money, and everything that we have. It should drive us to want to give all to him. This is one of the values of remembering that it was Christ that saved us from certain death and hell. Another thing is we, we, when, when uh, the fictitious guy donated his kidney, we will probably want to share that news with others. If we had access to a radio station or perhaps a TV station, we would probably want to uh, 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 do an interview and announce this guy to the world to show the world that there is still someone out there that is so kind and so gracious. How much more we should want to share our testimonies with others? How much more knowing what Christ did for us from, uh, by plucking us from the fire, how much more we, 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 we want to share this testimony with others, especially those that do not know him. See, those that have not come to Christ are in eternal danger of fire and eternal death which it should drive us to true evangelism. It should drive us to wanting to share the knowledge of the truth of Christ to everybody. See, the Bible tells us in Acts 4.12, there is no other way that one can be saved. The only way that we can be saved is to know Christ. There is no other way. There is no other way. See, there are many people around the world that think that there are other ways. Muslims, they think that their way is the way. Buddhists, Hindu, all other types of religions think their way is the way. But we know, we know as Christians, we know Christ, which means that we know the truth. There is no other way. 
The Bible says the only way to be eternally saved is by knowing Christ. We should want to share this news with all the world as recipients of that gift of being plucked from the fire. So, in conclusion, what should this message do for us? The message, the knowledge, knowing that Christ plucked us from eternal fire. Well, it should drive us to meditate on these things more often. You do not want to lose the meaning of what Christ did for you. You do not want to be distracted by the things of this world. You do not want Satan to steal your faith and your joy. You do not want Satan to come in and blind you with all the other things around you. Let this tr truth erupt in a renewed life and a renewed understanding of what God has done for you. Let it be now from this moment on, let it be the catalyst to making you more fervent, more zealous, and more vibrant in your Christian faith. This is what the Lord desires. He doesn't want anyone that is indifferent to him. He doesn't want anyone that is apathetic. He doesn't want anyone that is backsliding or cold. He wants fire and vibrancy in your Christian life. Well, the way to remember that you have been plucked from the fire is always to meditate on these things. When you do, it will be well with you. It would also be well with others as you evangelize and share the truth with them. I wanna thank you for joining me today. I pray that this message has been worthwhile for you. Meditate on this truth. You have been plucked from the fire. May the Holy Spirit continue to work in you to bring this remembrance to you always. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you very much.